No, I I want to give a, a big smile, but it usually comes out like a grimace, I think. So anyway, I do my best with it. Um, I was just reminded, and I was thinking about this. I was reminded about being having been on a bus. Uh, I think it's some years ago now, and I was sitting there. It was late in the evening. I was a bit tired, so I was sitting in my seat and hoping that nobody would come to sit beside me that I didn't I didn't want to talk but anyway after a little while a woman did come and she sat beside me even though there were, there were lots of other seats on the bus and I continued to try to uh, give the appearance of dozing but she turned to me and she said they are the real places you know so I, I didn't say anything. She said, yes, they are. Do you know what I'm talking about? No, 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 I, I don't, I said. Heaven and hell, the real places. Oh, I said. Well, yes, this was revealed to a woman in Austria some time ago. And they are indeed the real, real places. So she went on in that vein for a while, and then after a while I said, ah, no, no, they're not really, that's all a mindset, it's all in the mind. We create our own heaven and our own hell. Oh, no, 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 she said, no, you're wrong. And she continued for a while, and then it came to her stop, and she got up and she said, you'll find out soon enough. And she left me then with that rather joyful prediction. And then around the same time I happened to read an interview with a prominent physician and he was being asked about his beliefs and he said he didn't believe in anything. He didn't believe that there was anything after this life. That was it. When you're dead, you're dead. He didn't put it as uh, inelegantly as that, of course. So and there it was then, uh, she was totally sincere in her beliefs, he was equally sincere in his beliefs, and I, in the middle, sincere in my beliefs, that we create uh, uh, through our mind the whole continuing life. And of course I believe totally in the continuity of life. And it um, led me to thinking about that and about how, uh, how awful it is really when people try to impose their belief systems on others. I, I'm not talking about that woman now, for instance, like she, she, she was telling me that, and uh, I don't mean that in any judgment of her. But I'm thinking in terms of the whole historical situation, you know, and how, how this happened. And particularly, I was thinking recently about, say, times like the Inquisition, and um, how the whole thing of burning at the stake, and what that meant. The idea of the, the fire, you see, was that not, not just the body was being destroyed, but the soul, that the soul was being condemned to fire for all eternity. And this was done by people like um, one of the leading figures, for example, was uh, uh, St. Dominic, um, the founder of the Dominicans, and others. And he, he was totally sincere in that and believing that he was doing God's work. And so were others who were involved in it. Um, so it's been part of the the history of the world that this is the way that people have um, behaved towards others uh, and towards those who did, he didn't have similar beliefs. So what I'm doing here, you know, again early in the new year, is wishing for a different world, a world where there would be total harmony, where people would be free to. Um, believe whatever they want to believe, are free to uh, express their beliefs, uh, to take away all fear connected with that. And uh, that then 
also perhaps this, uh, um, if we can, can, can achieve that sort of open-mindedness, that it will help in the whole uh, progress of our own evolution, that we'll be open to new experiences, new adventures, um, and that uh, life, continuing life, will bring a lot of, a lot of joy, um, a, lot of, a lot of liberation. Like, it's a very confining thing to be stuck in a rigid belief system. Um, and uh, that's, um, it, it's, it would be so wonderful if that wasn't the case, you know, that uh, we, we, we wouldn't have all this sort of uh, lack of harmony in the world. Harmony is a wonderful word, I think. It's a word that um, would, be, would make so much difference to the world if, if, if we lived in total harmony with each other. And then that we wouldn't have any need for all these things like um, prisons, like courts, like armies, like laws indeed even. You know, because everything would be so, so, uh, so easy and uh, we talked about that in, in actually in the, the fourth book of the Grand Design, Volume 4, the setting out of a, a vision of an ideal society where people could live together in that way and uh, where we wouldn't have all the, the, the need for all the paraphernalia of, um, uh, of living that we're, we're stuck with, if you like. Um, in order in order to find security and so on you know that um, uh, when I was young um, people didn't need to lock their doors or anything like that that they, nobody would interfere with them and um, and that, that that was that was quite a common thing but now we're we're totally involved with security and all the things that go with it and that not just on an individual basis, but on a whole collective basis too, with internationally, and so on, you know, and the whole thing about this awful phrase of a war on terror and so on, because how can you have a war on terror, like war inspires terror and terror, so how can you defeat terror by war, you know, so that the whole thing becomes so um, infin infinitely uh, foolish, I think, in the long run. So that, again, is what I'm wishing now, is this for, for this harmony, this type, this wonderful harmony, if we could have it, and um, uh, <coughs> that we can all share our beliefs, whatever they may be, and uh, honour them, and accept them, and um, if uh, we don't agree with them, that's fine. If we do, that's fine, but we can learn from each other then, you see, and never go back to these rigidities where we, where we felt that we had to impose our beliefs on others. So, thank you so much for listening again. Bye.